Okay, so let me talk to you guys first about, um, let me tell you a story first about my, my, my very first paying job in media. So the first job I had was for a, a fashion magazine that you, you guys heard about in my extraordinarily long bio um, called Fashion Almanac. And it was run by this very old school Italian gentleman who had somehow lost his fortune in Italy. I think he, like, you know, had messed around with the wrong senior's signorina, if you know what I'm saying. Like it was a, it was a bad. But anyway, so he escaped to this country, and and you know he used to kind of parade around these like really shiny like suits, and um, you know he had this like long hair that he slicked back with a ton of gel, and and um, and he you know there was a ban on cigarettes in the office, but he would chain smoke anyway. He didn't care. So he was like you know walking around chain smoking in the shiny suits with the hair. So I'm just painting a picture because I just need you to understand the context. So the office reeked of cigarettes, and one day I was in there, you know, talking to him about who we want to have the next cover and, you know, who what models, you know, because it was a fashion magazine. So we're just, like, thinking about who were the models that would compel newsstand buyers to pick the next issue up, because that's really the name of the game. Like, how do you make people buy the issue? So we're, you know, talking about different people. And I brought up a model named Veronica Webb. Now, I don't know if you know who she is, but she was a really prominent um, African-American model in the 90s. This was in the 90s. Not to age myself, because you probably saw this picture and you were like, no possible way she could be working in the 90s. But this was in the 90s. And so this model, Veronica Webb, was the first African-American woman to get a major cosmetics contract from Revlon. She had a book out, just really smart, beautiful. And I was like, what about Veronica Webb? And so he looks at me, and he was, of course, smoking. And he takes this long drag of a cigarette, and he goes, Emmy, <sighs> black girls don't sell. So this is what the man says to me. I'm, I'm me, sitting in front of him, he looks at me, he's like, black girls don't sell. You know, which was pretty blatant. And it was a tremendous slap in the face because I've been working with this man for months at this point. You know, side by side, he'd given me, I mean, promotions aren't even the word at this point. He'd given me basically the entire magazine, you know, to run because I was you know, moving and grooving and doing well. And he sat there and looked me in my face and literally just said that, um, and literally just disregarded me as being irrelevant and not culturally viable and not commercially viable. So, you know, but at least in his cultural ignorance, he told me exactly what he thought. You know, that was almost a blessing because a lot of times what happens in mainstream media is that the message gets, cl gets cloaked in half-truths and statistics. Um, and you never really fully realize the extent to which positive images of black people are actually actively being kept out of the media. But that was my first realization.